Welcome, everyone. This is a series called Quiz Who Said This? And uh, we've had two uh, grades so far. You've, uh, if you've just landed here, you're in the third grade. Uh, you could go back and do first and second grade later if you want to keep proceeding to fourth. That's my recommendation. Let's uh, let's start it, keep it in order then. And uh, this says uh, it's one of three answers. It's either Jesus, Yahweh, and then with an asterisk, I'll explain that in a second, or Paul. And this is a fun way to learn. And you'll see there that the answer can be, uh, the asterisk means for Yahweh, it can be Psalms and Proverbs besides the Law and Prophets. It can be Moses' explanation of God's command. So basically anything in the Law of Prophets, Psalms, Proverbs, including words where Moses is summarizing God's word, it can also be considered Yahweh for purposes of this quiz. Okay, everybody, so let's uh, begin the, the uh, quiz. Now, who said this? As touching the law, I am a Pharisee. As touching the righteousness which is in the law, I was found blameless. Who can that be? Is that Jesus? Or is that Paul? Or is that Yahweh? Okay, the answer is Paul in Philippians 3, verses 5 to 6, ASV, American Standard Version. Question 2, who said this? It shall be righteousness or justification to us if we observe to do all these commandments before Yahweh our God and he has commanded us. What do you think that is? Is that Jesus? Is that Paul? Or is that Yahweh including Moses describing what Yahweh has said or from the Psalms or Proverbs? So who is the one speaking? Okay, make a note of it, write it down maybe, and then uh, score yourself when we give you the answer. Okay, and uh, so the answer is Deuteronomy 6, verse 25. This is the web edition, which, by the way, always shows you where the name Yahweh exists and was hidden by our King James and all the other Bibles, thinking that if we said the name, somehow we're going to go to hell, and that's false. That was a Greek Septuagint mistranslation of the Bible of Leviticus 17, say, which in the Greek false translation is, the Septuagint, it said, if you even name the name, meaning speak the name of Yahweh, you're going to hell. <laughs> you are, you've committed a sin. That's blasphemy, according to that. In fact, you're, it's an all, uh, you know, un, uh, uh, unpardonable sin. False. It's if you insult the name of Yahweh, and that's how bad the Greek Septuagint translation was. Okay. Anyway, that's, uh, and it's Moses speaking about uh, Yahweh's principles. Okay, so let's go to quick. I hope you got an, that correct. So now uh, make a note of what you your score was, and let's go to the question three. Next question three. Who said this? Who said of the law at least eleven times that it was quote eternal for all generations? The law given Moses. Who said that? Is that Jesus? Did Paul say that, or did Yahweh say that eleven times? What's, what do you think is the answer? Make a note of what you think the answer is, and we'll see if you get it correctly. Okay, and the answer of where eternal for all generations appears, it appears in the words of Yahweh, at least these 11 passages. And my studies later showed there's a, at least 19 passages. If you do a very careful research on uh, all the synonyms or the, uh, the other ways of saying eternal for all generations, uh, that uh, you'll come up with 19. Okay, so uh, let's go on. I hope you got that correct, and we'll go on to question four. That's interesting. It finally worked. All right, question four. Who said this? But before faith came, we were kept in custody under the law, confined for the faith which should afterwards be revealed, so that the law has become our tutor to bring us to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. Did Jesus, did Jesus teach this? Did Paul teach this? Or did Yahweh teach this? What do you think the answer is? Make a note of it, and we'll see if you got the answer correct. It's Paul in Galatians 3, 23 to 25, World English Bible. Okay, let's go to question five. And Abraham, who said this? And he, Abraham, believed in the Lord Yahweh, and he, that is Abraham, small h-e, and actually in the original there is no article there, just so you know, it's just, uh, and he, Abraham, believed in the Lord and counted it to him, meaning Yahweh, for righteousness. 
toward himself. So Abraham is believing God, Yahweh has acted righteous towards himself. So uh, the red highlight there means the word is not there. Now, who said this? Was this uh, uh, Jesus? Did Paul say this? Or did Yahweh say this? What do you think the answer is? Make a note of it. And then I'll reveal the answer and see if you got the answer correct. It was Moses explaining Genesis 15 in the KJV. So let's go to question six. For what says the scripture? Abraham believed God in it. And in this context, he means faith. When you read the whole thing, whoever this is, was counted unto him, meaning to Abraham, for righteousness. Now to him that works is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that works not, but believes on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Now, who said this? Was this Yahweh said this? Did Jesus say this? Or did Paul say this? So make your uh, notation of which one it is. Maybe just use a letter. Y for Yahweh, J for Jesus, and um, P for Paul. So here's the answer. Paul in Romans 4, 3 to 5, in the King JV, he's relying upon, these. this is the way it is translated in the false, Greek, corrupt, uninspired, 247 BC translation uh, authorized by a pagan ruler named Ptolemy, uh, who believes in multiple gods at that point. Just so you know, this is like an evil empire ordering the Jews to have a, their Bible translated, and apparently their translators they chose, or whoever did this translation to Greek didn't know the translation, <laughs> did not know how to translate things, as Nehemiah Gordon has recently said. A Karaite Jew. Okay, so, uh, and by the way, can you see the difference between the way it really reads? If we go back, the subject of the second clause counted is not a it, it is he, and that's implied because the subject didn't change. And Abraham believed in the Lord and counted it to him, and the him has to be Yahweh. He's counting it to Yahweh for righteousness toward himself. He did a righteous deed and he is being appreciative. He's being thankful about that. All right. Just to show you, this is this lesson of uh, these quizzes are useful also to see when you compare passage to passage, something we normally don't do. You can see the variance. Let's keep going. And that was question six. Hope you got that correct. Let's uh, go to the next question. All right. Hold on. I will not justify the wicked or the ungodly. Okay. So did uh, Paul say that? Did Jesus say that, or did uh, Yahweh say this? This is question seven. So we'll make a note, Y for Yahweh, J for Jesus, P for Paul, or whatever system you want to say. Okay, so after you make your note, I'll now reveal the answer. The answer is Yahweh says this in Exodus 23, verse 7. The word there for uh, wicked is rasha. It means wicked or criminal. It means someone who's unrepentant, essentially a person who is ungodly. So it's it's uh, it's important because if you go back here again, go, comparing verses to verses, uh, Paul said uh, God justifies the ungodly here in the bottom part of this passage of Romans four three to five. Let's keep going. But if a man now who said this? But if a man be just and do what that which is lawful and right and has walked in my statutes and has kept my judgments to deal truly, he is just. He shall surely live, says the Lord Yahweh God. All right, so did Paul say this? Did Jesus say this? Or did Yahweh say this? Let's see, make a note of which is your answer, and then I'll reveal the answer now. The answer is Ezekiel, uh, quoting Yahweh in Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 5 and 9 in the KJV. Next one is question nine, and the publican, and now who said this? And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the, the other. For everyone that exalts himself shall be abased, and he that humbles himself shall be exalted. Now, who said that? Did Paul say this? this is how you get justification? Did Jesus say this is how you get justification? Or did did uh, is this Yahweh's words directly, saying, attributed directly to Yahweh? So let's see what the answer is in number nine. 
Jesus in Luke 18, verses 9 to 14, KJV. So uh, Luke uh, understood Jesus' message of justification is not the way others say, but is according to what? According to your repentance from sin and the direction you're going to change. And God will be merciful to someone who's confessing, I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness and justification. But that means you're humbling yourself and begging for mercy, not because um, you you have nothing to repent from, nothing to change from, nothing to offer God that you promise to re- repent and change your mind about things, to follow Yahweh's rules or God's rules. You know, it's it's all of those things you must do. You must repent. Jesus said, unless you repent, you, you will likewise perish. There's a meaning to the word repentance. It's changing your mind and direction about your sin life and not just begging for forgiveness of it with no change of heart and soul and direction. And that's the difference between the publican and the tax collector. And by the way, John MacArthur says actually um, a very wise thing. He says, but the one occasion where Jesus actually declared someone justified provides the best insight into the doctrine as he taught it, not as other people teach it, as he taught it. And justification is not by simply believing in three facts about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection resurrection as Jesus sees it. Others see it differently. And we can admit that. Paul sees it 100%, 180 degrees opposite of what Jesus is talking about. I'm going to give you a bonus point. Maybe you're falling behind and you're not sure you're going to get to seven by the end. So let's give you a chance to get uh, an answer. But it's going to be a little harder than usual. It, I'm going to ask you, what prophet of Yahweh is quoting Yahweh here? So you have to know the book of the law and the prophets is speak who that prophet is speaking. Okay, here's the quote. The word of Yahweh came unto me again when the wicked man turns away from his wickedness that he has committed and does that which is lawful and right. He shall save his soul alive because he considers and turns away from all his transgressions that he has committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. Who said that? Which prophet? So this is a bonus point of one point. So give it a thought. Uh, is it, uh, th- just think of all the prophets. There's Hosea, Amos, Nehemiah, uh, Zech- Zechariah. There's Ezekiel. There's Isaiah. There's just a whole bunch to think about. So which one? All right. So I hope you've written it down and now we'll reveal who it was. It's Ezekiel in 18 verses 27 to 28 in the King James Bible. By the way, notice how that lines up with how Jesus teaches and does not line up with how Paul teaches. Just just saying. So whoever wants to follow Paul, you have to explain how these things are so different. Okay, so uh, we're on our last slide. I hope that you're at least at six so you can uh, pass this grade. This is the third grade. He that loves his life loses it, and he that hates his life and this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will the Father honor. Okay, so who said this? Was this Paul? Was this Jesus? Or was this Yahweh? Okay, so the answer was Jesus in John chapter 12, verses 25 to 26 in the American Standard Version. So I hope you did uh, at least seven, and you can pass on to the next uh, uh, series of quiz questions. All right, and just to make it clear, this is uh, how we're going to grade. You have to self-grade yourself. So let's just go through this one last time here. Uh, for this episode. How did you score of the 10 questions? If you did not receive seven points, including the bonus question, please redo this test until you pass. And once you pass, please then go to the fourth grade test and uh, you'll keep uh, going on to the whole series. Okay. God bless. Take care, everybody. Ciao. Bye.